Good morning. This is uh, day 28. Four weeks. Been out here. Feeling kind of banged up today. Did not get a good night's sleep. And my right Achilles is killing me. Oh, is that why they call it the Achilles? I know, it's spelled differently. But yeah, every step is like a knife in my heel, so, so that's cool. What can you do? I did not sleep very well. Not because of my heel, I just tossing and turning. Every time I would think about that poor woman right there that was killed by that tree. I don't know, just didn't sleep good, so pretty tired and in a uh, intense amount of pain. So, hey, that's how it goes, I guess. We're about 60 miles to the finish. In a perfect world, I'd do 320s, but I think there's some water scarcities for a good 20 mile stretch and I might do a shorter day today if my heel doesn't start cooperating. So who knows? Still out here. Every step gets us gets me closer to the finish. See what today brings. I just ran into three hunters that were camped at one of the uh, little trailhead roads and they're asking me if I heard any elk, see any elk, and um, I haven't seen any since before Silverton. It's so crazy, I like three, I mean, three minutes of conversation is like, so, it's like so, it like boosts my morale so much. So rejuvenating just to have a human interaction for, you know, literally like three minutes. That's definitely been the, the biggest challenge of this entire trip. It's just the isolation. I think that that uh, increases the difficulty of everything else. Meaning like, you know, when it's cold, when it's, when I'm tired, when I'm hungry, when I'm confused, when I'm overwhelmed. I feel like everything, it's, it's all intensified by like being completely alone with it all. If that, you know, like not having it, like anyone to share that with, like it feels like heavier or something. And I'm not, I'm not complaining because, you know, I came out here for all of this, but it's one of those things like, I'm glad I didn't know that it would be as intense as it is or as isolated as it is or that this isolation would feel this way before I came because I would have probably had a little bit more uh, trepidation about coming, you know. I just came out here like super confident, super ready. It's definitely been humbling, you know. I think that's why the other day, like staying in Silverton, that extra, taking that zero day, you know, it made sense time-wise. It was also just like really great because a whole bunch of us had kind of come together. It's like one of those like movies, like um, I don't know, where every all, all, all these different travelers have all like met up at this hotel, all from different backgrounds, going in different directions. There was two guys who were just finishing; they're 40 miles from finishing um, a bike tour of the Colorado Trail. They were riding out that that night, and so talking to them was really cool. My last big trip was 
my cross country bike tour. And then there's all these diff different hikers that were coming in and everyone's near the end. And it's one dude who just got injured. And so like he's, he, he has to come back and finish the trail in, uh, you know, when, when he heals up. And then there was a couple that was finishing up. And so it's just cool. This really like human interaction. I realize like how vital it is for mental health and vitality. I think <laughs> taking a trip with uh, another person or several people has its own set of, you know, issues and that you have to navigate, no pun intended, but it's probably a more desirable, it's probably a reason why a lot of people, uh, you know, form like what they call a tramley, which is when you're on the trail and you end up with people for days uh, or the whole trail, you kind of lean on each other. I'm sure like any family, you have your arguments, your disagreements. This is when I know I'm talking too long, my arm starts to get tired and I have to switch arms. <laughs> There's gonna be some serious editing. I think that that Tranley thing obviously is the reason that that becomes popular. I think even solo hiking on more popular trails or, or, or during the more popular season, I think back to my cross country ride and I don't, I remember being tired, I remember being frustrated, I remember having, you know, all of this, overwhelmed everything at times but I don't remember this isolation I, mean, I remember being lonely but it's occurred to me that just being on roads that were made by a person passing cars that were you know being operated by people that made such a difference every day and being out here like right now I'm walking on this road and while they get boring I really enjoy road walks because I think Partly because I'm on a road made by humans. And there's like the uh, off chance that a, some four wheel drive will come driving up the road. It's interesting how much uh, isolation affects um, me and how much of a challenge it's posed for this trip. Coming out, as I got further and further on the trail, I'd run into people, and they're like, where do you get to the San Juans? Where do you get to the San Juans? They're the most, most beautiful part. I have to say, the San Juan mountain range is unbelievable. All the different colors and uh, like textures and types of rock, I mean, purples and reds and like these blues and grays and greens. Everything I've seen from Colorado in my life, San Juan's get my vote for most beautiful mountain range. San Juan's baby. I told myself when I started, I was gonna do 100 push-ups every day. Totally forgot. That up there is my second to last. 12,000 foot pass. I got this one. I'm gonna drop down, camp somewhere for the night. I feel, feels good. This is my second to last. Uh, the kid don't like being above about 11, 11K. Things start misfiring, not working properly. I'm gonna try and soak this in because there's only a couple more of them.
It's um, a little bit before four o'clock and I am calling it kind of early today. Uh, I only made about 15 miles. A couple reasons. Uh, first one being I am at what appears to be the last water source before a 22, some reports say 22 miles, might be more like 18 uh, with no water. My thought is camp here tonight. I can fill up tomorrow, try to just hammer that out. Uh, the other reason is my Achilles on my right uh, ankle is just really not cooperating with me. <laughs> I'm not sure, quite sure what's going on there, but it was just really kind of a, a slow slog today, trying to just kind of keep from applying too much pressure or being too hard on it. Figure maybe 15 today, get a good night's sleep, and maybe it'll cooperate a little more tomorrow. It looks like I'm not flat, but I don't have a ton of elevation for the uh, first big chunk of tomorrow. And then I'll be going up to my last 12,000 foot uh, pass. So, I uh, found a pretty cool spot. Found a pretty cool spot. Kind of weird stopping now, but it's been overcast and kind of, um, it's kind of raw out right now. So it kind of almost feels like it's later in the evening anyway. It almost kind of has like that 5.30, 5.45 feel because you can't see the sun. Anyway, hopefully uh, after the shitty night of sleep I had last night, I'll fall asleep early. Yeah, we got about, where am I? 40. I think I'm at mile 440. Yeah, I'm at mile 440, so we got 45 miles to go. Pretty wild. Cool. Well, I'm going to do my thing, and I'll see you guys on the next one.